Now, as always, I'm going to suggest we should make these programs work for us in the way we're most comfortable working. So in that vein, let's set up a custom workspace. You notice that I'm working in typography. You have all these same settings, but what you don't have is something named My Typography. And this is a dumb name. So I'm going to actually delete this and save a different one. Um, but where this starts is, what panels do we want at our fingertips? You notice we've got um, different panels that are here in typography by default. This is how it pops up. If I go to typography, uh, reset typography, it comes back. I don't like how the libraries pop up uh, in front of the swatches. Rather have those swatches sitting there. Maybe shorten this guy up because we don't really need that much room there. We can come down. Notice how I'm adjusting this by moving in between these panels. Now, layers, for some reason, comes up compressed, and this confuses a lot of students. I'm going to double click on the layer name, uh, pop that open, and right now, the character styles and paragraph styles, we're not going to be using these for a while, so why not drag these out and delete them because they're really not helpful at this point in time. They are in the future uh, for reasons that we may get to in the second semester. But for right now, this works really good. And our character panel, we don't want this in the small version. Click on this double-headed arrow and always, always, always have this character panel open so you have all these cool tools. What are these? Um, <laughs> I want you guys to look and experiment. All right, so the panels we do want window. We've just been working with symbols. So let's open that up and the symbols opens up with the brushes panel, which is really cool because I'd like both of these. Now grab it by this top bar and drag it. If you come over, you see, you'll notice that at some point you get these different blue lines. This means where do you want to drop it? We don't want it over here on the left side because then we just build out and we're covering up all our workspace. So I'm going to click this and draw. Whoops. <laughs> just pulled that back. If you, ever, if you ever do that, you just grab this and put it right back on that line. Snaps in. You saw that blue line came up along that edge. I'm going to grab it not by this top bar, but by this second one. Thankfully, a little happy accident there so you can anticipate this. Now, I want the symbol and brushes to show up at the bottom of this list. So I'm going to grab it, come down, and come so I get that line underneath. Now I've got access to my brushes and my symbols. Snazzy, huh? Also, we've been using the transform panel, which coincidentally pops up with a line. Transforms down here. It doesn't matter which one you pick. You get transform and a line. You also get Pathfinder, which used to be this super cool tool, and still can be used uh, effectively. But we have the Shape Builder right here, which is awesome, and we'll be using that. So let's go ahead and drop this right here, and we get Transform, right? We get our Align Panel and the Pathfinder at our fingertips. Wouldn't it be cool if when we opened up a new document, this is how it opened up? Once again, customizing it how you wish. And if you don't get it right, it's okay. You can save over the top of this file. Now, you just come up to New Workspace and name it something cool, huh? So, Scospace, uh, that's mine. You name yours how you want. So now, we can, if we're ever in another file and we want to come back and work on our space, we can click right here and we get, notice how everything popped up the way I set it. Isn't that cool? So now every time a new document opens, if I want to work in this custom workspace, life is good. Come back and I'll show you how to uh, work with workspaces and um, reset any mistakes you make.